I ask people to send me their most cringe-worthy TikTok videos, and I have a handful of them. We're going to watch them together, and I will react to them for you. Let's do some budgeting. This is actually for my February 1st paycheck, but I'm just now editing it. Also, why do my finances always look the worst when it's time to make these freaking videos? Oops, anyway. This was an especially great payday because I got my paycheck for $2,010, and I also got my quarterly bonus of $1,100. Congrats. Love it when people get bonuses. That's cool. So total, I got paid $3,183. Sadly, I did have to pay rent. So my boyfriend sent me twelve twelve for his half and I had about $300 in my checking already. Okay. So now my question is, why do you have only $300 in your checking? I know a lot of people recommend three to six months of emergency expenses. You can go even longer than that. If you're a freelancer, if you're a business owner, 300 is really low. So the total checking balance is $4,724. Then the time I got paid before this, I had put $835 aside for half of my car and rent payments. So I transferred that back to my regular checking since I'm paying those bills today. And that makes my checking balance $5,559. Rent was $25.55. So after I paid that, I had $3K left. And this is where I want to stop the video because my credit card is at an insane $4,900. Okay. I was sitting here wondering when is the cringeworthy part going to come in? I know it's not just the $300 in checking because she's paying her bills and now she's transferring money, but that much in her credit card, I hope she pays this off. Because I am visiting family overseas this summer who I haven't seen in like 10 years and those flights were very expensive. Pay it so off. I just paid 2000 toward that bill and I'm gonna transfer some money out of savings to cover the rest. Okay. And I'm leaving 1K in my checking account until the next time I get paid just in case of any emergencies. Follow me or else. Hey. That's not that bad. That's not very cringeworthy. Okay, let's see if the other one or the next video is cringeworthy. Every hundred dollars you make, fold it up, put it away, out of sight, out of mind. This is a savings trick I learned from some agent on TikTok, so let's try it. All right, so I've already sorted out my hundred. Folding your money is not necessarily a savings trick. Getting money and not spending it is the savings trick. So I have to save all of this and only spend this. All right, I got them all right here folded up. Like I said, this is savings and this is spending. Let me know in the comments. I, I'm going to congratulate and give kudos to anybody who is saving money because I love that. But... I don't really see the point in folding up your money and putting it in your wallet that way. Just get a regular wallet or a billfold, stack your money up like this, put it in the wallet and be done with it. Or better yet, invest the stuff. I love you. Try this. Every All right. Moving on to the next video. When you go to the grocery store and you spend 200 bucks on groceries and it stresses you out and you feel like, damn, I just spent 200 bucks on groceries. No, you didn't. You spent $200 and you exchanged that energetic currency for $200 worth of health nutrients. and wellness yeah. and nutrients. Yes, yes. I mean, see, this manifestation stuff and this, you, you are the world and the energy and universe everywhere. I, I don't really have a problem with that, but you are paying for goods and services. You're exchanging money to get something. And, and food is a consumable because you literally consume it. Tires are consumable. Razor blades are consumable for shaving. Body wash, like toiletries. All of these things are consumable goods. You're not transferring it and having it forever. Just stop with this madness. So every time I spend money, I'm not thinking, wow, I just lost that on something. No, I you didn't lose it. You gained the food. Created it for something that's the equal value. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so by thinking about it like that, my abundance never lacks. Oh, not right? with this abundance stuff. Come on. It never goes away because whenever I spend money, it's I still have it. Yeah. No, you don't. You spend the money to get goods and services and those goods and services can and should be more valuable to you than the money or else why would you exchange the money for them? But you are still exchanging money. The money is no longer in your account. It has gone somewhere else. It is in another person's hands. But fortunately, we live in a capitalistic society where you can provide goods and services to other people and get money from them to replenish your supply. It's everywhere when you go to the grocery store. All right, I got this. Next video. That one was pretty cringeworthy. What is the best financial advice you've ever received? Invest in assets, not oh, liabilities. Right. What is the worst financial advice you've ever received? The way to build wealth is saving your money. Yes and no. You have to save the money to invest. You have to have something to invest. I know what he's saying. I get this. Uh, I give him a pass on this. So true. Third question. What is something you used to value that you don't anymore? Material things. What is something that you think people think is important when it comes to money, but you realize that's not really the right focus? Net worth. Net worth is a crap indicator of real success. It's a pretty good indicator of financial success. It's like when people say, oh, I'm a bad test taker. You mean you're bad at doing the thing that demonstrates your knowledge? And people say, oh, 
net worth doesn't matter. You mean the thing that demonstrates how much value you provided to society and the world? And I know there are exceptions. Please just let me speak in generalities here. Net worth does matter. It's a financial scorecard. How to become a millionaire in real estate and starting off with just ten thousand dollars? Yes, let me know. The hardest thing you got to do is save up that initial ten thousand dollars. Got it. Because that initial ten thousand dollars can get you in with three point five percent down on your very first property around three hundred thousand dollars. Step number two: you want to let this property cash flow, and if you pick the right property in the right Airbnb market. That pro Airbnb market. I know there are lots of people out there who are making a killing with Airbnb. The reason I'm not crazy about Airbnb is because just recently they increased their fees on people. I can't remember what it was before, but now it's 15% and the owners have no control. Some of the tenants are terrible. I've heard of people who rent in the off season get way worse tenants than people who are renting in peak seasons. I'm not passing judgment on Airbnb or not. I'm just saying I would rather have a steady monthly rent check coming in. Free is going to net you $30,000 in a 12 month span. Now be smart with your money. Don't just take that 30 grand and party, take that 30 grand and get yourself into a $600,000 house because that $600,000 house, if you buy it in the right market, Wait, so all $30,000 you're collecting and you don't pay a single expense? You have to pay cleaning fees, you got to pay maintenance, you got to pay property taxes, you got to pay insurance. There's so many things that this guy is leaving out. The right Airbnb market, that property is going to cash flow you $50,000 that next calendar year. Now take that cash flow and the next thing you buy with that 60 grand is you get yourself into a $700,000 house. So hopefully you can see how quickly. So eventually you get to a $1 million house, then you can get a $2 million house and a $3 million house. And eventually, if you stick with this long enough, you will have a $3 billion. You can turn this 10 grand into a million dollars. Now here's the best part of being a business owner. Uncle Sam is going to incentivize you to be a business owner. And just like Donald Trump didn't have to pay anything on his tax returns, you won't either. Whoa. I did not know that. I'm a business owner and I have been paying taxes. What have I been doing wrong my entire life? This is your tax write-offs and the benefits of being a business owner. Now, to be fair, there are tons of tax benefits that come from real estate. You've got depreciation and you have expenses that you can write off. I understand that, but you have to pay your taxes. There, there are ways to claim losses, but that is beyond the scope of this video. But it, you definitely have to pay your taxes. Let's go to the last video, and I hope it doesn't make me cringe too much. The main reason why people aren't millionaires, in my opinion, is because they're looking at money from the wrong angle. They're saying, how can I make a million dollars a year, when they should be saying, how can I make $2,739 a day? Okay, that's how it works out. If I want to make a day, I can say I want to make a certain amount per minute or per second, but it's still the same amount. I understand it's easier to visualize though. If you think like that, every day you hit that goal, you'll hit the yearly goal. Yes, that's how math works. If I do, if I get two units on day one and two units on day two, and my goal is to get four units, then yes, I will hit four. I'm not going to go too hard on this guy. He seems young and his heart is in the right place, I assume, and I wish him nothing but the best. So these were cringeworthy. Please send me some more TikToks. Let me know what should I talk about next.